It's a scaling problem. But that's what we were adjusting for. The multiplication method. We'll never be able to accommodate for an... A set of 20 weapons. You can't scale for it. infinite. <laughs> it's like trying to divide by zero. It can't be done. But the outcome to this equation remains... It remains the same. You lose. You were wrong. I know. No. I'll find another way. I'll change the equation. I can use simulations, and the chi-squared goodness of fit test. Hello! So, admittedly, I screwed up. Multiplying the binomial distributions together is not the right way, because they are from the same total set of trials, therefore the sets aren't independent from each other, even if the individual roles of the guns are. However, I'm not here just to say that I'm wrong, I've come to propose slash present several more methods in assessing someone's luck. Disappointingly, there is still a lot of pinches of salt that you need to take, and the best method is to create simulations and see how often a game of that luck pops up. But I want to show my findings anyway on this statistical method. Before I get into the statistical method, I just want to say that there is a lot of information which are gathered from my simulations, especially concerning the patterns and phenomena with the box that have become evident by the amount of messing around and playing around that I've done. And also, I've realized that perhaps a Word document might be easier for people to process than a video of me just rambling on. So I have made this uh, informal research thing. Please check it out as it is very helpful on its own, as well as some prerequisite knowledge uh, is included in this, which is needed um, for understanding the following method, as it is a bit inadequate on its own but I will reference that uh, in the video. So make sure you've read through this, at least skimmed through it, and then whenever I reference something in the video, come back and reread this. So yeah, back to past days for it. The method I'm on about is the chi-squared goodness of fit test, which can be used to infer similar things from the binomial method. However, we can combine the distributions unlike the multiplication I did last time. So this chi-squared test is actually a measure of deviance from the expected value, both unlucky and lucky games will show up on the measure. So the way a chi-squared goodness of fit test works is that we declare a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis, which means that if the data fits within the null hypothesis, it's not suspicious, but if it doesn't, it is statistically significant and therefore suspicious. So in order to make this as an objective measure as possible, we first need to a standardized set of guns for every map, for Ascension, I'll be using the example of the Tegan, Gersh, and Dolls. For Call of the Dead, you might use something else, but it should still work nonetheless. So, the null hypothesis for the mystery box is that the chosen guns will always follow a binomial distribution, with the probability of each gun being 1 in 20, which is that uh, bell curve that we've seen previously. And the alternative hypothesis would be that the sampling of the guns either doesn't follow the binomial distribution, or doesn't follow a 1 in 20 probability for the chosen guns. In our case, we'll mainly be checking if the probability of the chosen guns is significantly deviant from 1 in 20 or 0 0.05. So, to dive into the chi-squared uh, distribution, I've made a little script which creates a plot for us. So, here we have a graph of probability density on the y-axis and chi-squared value on the x-axis. The blue line represents the curve that a chi-squared distribution with two degrees of freedom follows, so this blue line here. And just like the bell curves from the last video, area under the blue line represents uh, probability. So the larger the area that you've highlighted or selected, the more likely that thing is to happen. The dotted lines slicing up this curve represents two different chi-squared values, one being a critical value and the other one being a value that's produced from the calculation. I'll uh, explain what that means in a second, but this red one is the critical value, the null hypothesis p-value, and the green line is the goodness of fit value that we get from our data. A critical value is a value that has to be chosen, 
this represents the cutoff point at which we choose uh, that something is going against the null hypothesis. So on this graph, that basically means that anything to the right of this red line breaks the null hypothesis and should be considered as a suspicious game. Anything to the left, like this one here, doesn't break the uh, null hypothesis and is not suspicious. And there's a little bit of green area here symbolizing that. So here's where uh, the zombie community has to come in to decide on what a good value for that cutoff point is and what counts as suspicious. The chi-squared goodness of fit gives us a chi-squared value for all the selected guns and can also give us a p-value. A p-value is the probability of getting a sample or more extreme than the one observed. Often, for many things in the real world, people would use a p-value of 0.05 for a statistical significance. In my example, I'll be using a p-value of 0.025, which is half of what uh, many industries use as the null hypothesis threshold, which means that a game which has a p-value of equal to or less than 0.025 breaks the null hypothesis, and therefore it's quite suspicious. Also, remember that the chi-squared, the goodness of fit test, uh, tests for deviation from the expected, which means both good luck and bad luck contributes to this number. So let's give a bit more examples. Uh, I'll be using the games that Crops uh, mentioned in his video in the spreadsheets. And the game you've already been seeing is a Gyros uh, 2 to 1 moon game. However, if I change that to Furrit's 2 4 4 game and run it again, we'll find that the green value is way beyond the red value, way beyond the null no hypothesis. So to have a game approach the red line from the left to the right, it's already pretty lucky, but to have it this far out, it's very lucky. Uh, there's a bunch of information about the game being printed down here, which I'll go into in a bit. So let's look at another one. Let's look at Slayer's game. Slayer's 210 moon game. Hmm. It seems that he was not, uh, he was not very lucky. <laughs> Or I think he was actually, in fact, unlucky, which is why it even strays from zero. But as you can see, it's very far to the left. This game is very likely to happen, and it's very far away from the critical value. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's look at Furret's uh, Moon 218 game. Hmm, okay. It's not that bad. It's, it's quite pr plausible, actually. It's not that lucky. Uh, I mean, the sample sizes for some of the guns are very low, but it's far away from the critical value. Okay, I think I have one more game to look at, and let's look at ZF, ZRFM's Moon game. Hmm, would you look at that? He is also beyond the critical value. Did he cheat his game? Should it be considered suspicious? So, this is where the information gathered from the simulations uh, comes in as well. So, one of the things I gather from the simulations with a lower amount of sample sizes, guns are more likely to be deviant. Also, you're quite likely to get a game with at least one of your target weapons to be very lucky. Not all three of them, two of them a bit less, but one of them is not unlikely. So, there are two caveats with, with this method. When the sample sizes are really low, and when there's only one gun that's extremely lucky, it may result in red herring. However, if you have multiple guns, and if they're all pretty low sample sized, they're still all unlikely to be very lucky at the same time. You still can get one that's super lucky, that acts as a red herring that pushes the chi-squared value beyond the critical value. However, I have thought of a way to address um, these spurious values, and that's by giving the different guns different weights depending on the sample size of those guns. I've also done a nice spreadsheet version of this, but before we move on to the spreadsheet, I wanted to just show the functionality of this code. So uh, whenever you run a game and then you get this thing, you also, down here in the chat, uh, you get each gun's chi-squared value and the p-value of the whole game, which is what the green color is. And then you can do that for another game. So let's do Slayer's Moon. Same, you get the information down here. Uh, I think some of this is actually negative. I'm not sure which ones because, uh, yeah. <laughs> and we can do for it's uh, 244 as well. There, and you can see that all of the three guns have a big chi-squared value. So I've never actually shown you guys how to do this calculation, 
and uh, for that I've conveniently made a nice spreadsheet. So the layout of the spreadsheet is not too different from the box lock uh, sheet that you guys saw from the last video, but uh, here it shows you the equation for calculating the chi-squared value, and uh, that means uh, O is the observed or the number of successes, E is the expected, which is the number of trials multiplied by the chance. So in the example I have set up here, I have gyros trials, and the expected value here is just uh, the trials by the chance of success, which is 1 in 20 or 0 0.05. The expected values go down here. So in these colored cells here for chi-squared, I put in the formula for each one of the guns, and I get a chi-squared value, and down here I add them all up, and this null hype critical chi-squared is the value that this has to surpass to be breaking the null hypothesis. And this is the null hypothesis p-value that we are inputting, which is 0 0.025, half of the 0 0.05 that most industries use. And this here is the p-value that this is equivalent to. So as you can see, it's greater than 0 0.025, so therefore not suspicious. Also, something that I forgot to mention was the degrees of freedom, which is the number of guns minus one, or the number of categories minus one, which is needed to calculate the critical value and also the p resultant p-value from our sum. Interestingly enough, remember as I said, you're likely to get at least one of your target guns uh, to be quite lucky, and you see this one is quite far ahead even though when combined it does not break the null hypothesis, despite it being quite lucky as a gun individually. Just not as lucky as ZF RM's game. Let's put his game in. Which one was uh, that, that one? And this is ZF uh, RM's game. He's got one gun that's uh, luckier than all the others, and it just about pushes it over the critical value. Also, remember that when it's one gun, it's not condemning evidence, and also it's a very relatively low sample size, which is even more non-condemning evidence, if that makes sense. However, remember that I mentioned that I found a way to address this by uh, weighting uh, the guns differently? so. Down here, there's an enable weights question, and if you set this to 1, the, there will be a few new fields added in. So there will be a weight field for each gun here, which will uh, attribute a lower weight to the gun if the number of trials is much less than the maximum in the set of guns that you've added. So for this one, gun number 3, the 748 trials, it has a weight of 1. The sus gun the one that had 7.3, which has 400 hits only, has got a 0 0.6 weighting, and this gun has even less weighting because it's actually 230. So when you add these up, it does not pass the critical value. So this is kind of a way to counteract the, the varying sample sizes of the guns. So let's see what this looks like for the other game. So let's put in Gyro's game. What's Gyro's game going to look like? The, the sus gun has become even less sus because it wasn't the most populated, the most trialed gun out of all of them. So, game becomes even less sus. Let's see, Slayer's game. This will be interesting. So, with Slayer's game, all of his guns are already uh, quite low in the tree squared value, so it doesn't really change it that much. So, let's uh, do Furrits to 18 Moon game, which isn't that bad. Also, not that deviant. It, it just barely reaches one on each gun, so it's quite acceptable. And then let's look at the infamous 244 game. Boom! Interesting. The 244 game is sus even after the weight normalization. So it seems that the Gersh's, because they're pretty low sample size compared to the Tegan, uh, they've lowered in weight dramatically. They're a third, less than a third of what it used to be, so that's like gone to a lower number. And these guns remain pretty high and enough to pass 
the critical value. So even after weighing the values for its to four four game, still passes the critical value of uh, with a null hypothesis of zero point zero two five. And keep in mind that this is free guns that are deviant. Uh, I know that this one's quite low after weight normalization, but it's still deviant before. So I, I think whenever we're judging a game for being lucky, we need to make sure that it's more than one gun being deviant, and they are very deviant, like in this case. They, they're past, they're enough to surpass the critical value. It's not like just one tri squared, it's five and five, or five and three if you weight it, five and four. So, yeah. If the case is only just one gun, then that's easy because we can measure how lucky a gun is with one binomial distribution and we don't need to do this combination. So for those people that don't want the dolls, they don't think the doll should be considered a gun. So if you just uh, get rid of the third gun, everything adjusts correctly, critical value drops down because now it's two guns instead of one and it's still both before and after being weighted, his game passes the critical value for sussness and it's been lowered to 0 0.025 so yeah so just to conclude and to uh, recap all this stuff if you have only one gun preferably use the binomial distribution if you have more than one gun use the chi-squared or even better the simulators but also to give a recap of the chi-squared caveats having one gun lucky is not unlikely However, an increase of deviance from the norm becomes less and less likely, so the further away uh, the gun is from the expected value, the more rare it is. Having multiple target guns lucky scales with rarity with each gun added and distance from the expected value for each gun. Many of these reasons I discuss in the simulations document, so make sure you look at that. Another one is that the chi-squared goodness of fit test does not account for the higher chance of luck in lower sample sized weapons versus higher sample sized weapons. Weighing the weapons can reduce the weight of the lower sample sized ones compared to the most sample sized ones. Though this is normally done with the chi-squared statistics and is also vastly ineffective if all the sample sizes were low. We probably need to put in a minimum for a minimal sample size for a weapon but that is dependent on the community. So, to conclude, I hope that this video has done a decent job at explaining the chi squared method. Though, I do see some drawbacks of this method, which I've mentioned throughout the video. So, if you have any suggestions for alterations or other methods, please tell me in the comments. I am always. <laughs> and currently, I believe that the simulators are the closest to comparing odds properly. I strongly suggest reading through that document and also set up the simulations repo yourself and have a play around with them. Perhaps maybe you find something which I failed to mention with the simulators. Also, do say that in chat, uh, in the comments. I'll continue updating the document with anything new that I learn. So, no matter how much... We try to find an analytical method. It will never be yeah, enough, enough to account for all edge cases. The simulations will always remain the best way. It's almost as if... As soon as people started cheating, this was doomed to happen.